Well, hello and welcome along to Crumlin Leisure Centre for tonight's under 15 NIBFA Cup subway sponsored semi final. It's between Crusaders and Glen Torin. I'm Barry Green. The team's switching round after the uh, toss at the start of the game. Uh, just a single point separates these two in the under 15 NIBFA Premier Division in league terms. Tonight, these two, Belfast heavyweights lock horns once more. And the weather has uh, certainly played a bit. Uh, better than it did in the earlier game. Um, I can tell you it was windy, it was rainy earlier on for the under 30 uh, semi-final. Incidentally, the other under 15 semi-final, well that isn't until the 24th of March. The winners of this will go on to face either the Gannon Swifts or Linfield in the final. There's plenty to play for. I'm certainly looking forward to this one. Thanks for joining us and we're underway. And Torin playing in their regular colours. Green, black shorts and uh, green socks. And the crews in red and black. No surprises there. Early attack from the crews. Could play this from them. Scott McLeod was coming forward with possession. We'll get another chance here with Cohen Beatty. Struggling to clear. Certainly uh, not long in getting up to tempo with these two teams. They have been warming up at the side of the pitch for some time, it has to be said. Quite the crowd here as well. High foot there. That's from Glen Torrens' James Heaney on Oliver Peoples. Run through the two team lineups then. It's Crusaders playing from left to right. Matthew Boyle in goal, Coist Walker, the captain Leon Barr, Benjamin Carton, and Cohen Beatty. Complete back five, Scott McLeod, Matthew Beatty, Brandon Downey and Rio Crawford and Oliver Peoples uh, coupled with Callum McCoy. Good headed clearance from Glen Torrin. They look to further clear the ball. Took down the line by Jack Faluna. It's back with the cruise goalkeeper Matthew Ball. 13. Clean sheets, incidentally, for him this season from 23 games. It'd be difficult to keep one tonight, you would feel. So for the Glens, they have Milo Beamers in goal, Barry McCurvey, Max McGrotty, Jaden Charnley, and James Heaney. Jack Faluna sitting in just in front. The skipper, got Gary Dixon, Joe Kerr. James King and Cal Weather, Weatherup and uh, George Feeney. 14 goals to his name this season. And Feeney, Northern Ireland under 16 call up to his name. Heading to Poland later this month. So throw in to the Glens. to clearance by the Glens keeper. Who's striker Callum McCoy knew he couldn't touch that ball. He would have been judged to have been offside. Weather up who looking to get forward towards the Cruise 18 yard box and has possession. That's lovely footwork from Weatherup. 18 goals this season, so a guy who knows where the net is. It's a promise. He need. Inside to Jim Charnley. Cruise have it back. Head to heads this season have been competitive to say the least as we almost see an opportunity for Gary Dixon. Runs all the way through to Matthew Boyle. Glens have won the last two. And beat 
Crusaders 3-1 on the opening day of the season and then in December edged that particular clash winning by three goals to two. Already high on quality. Two sets of players. They know one another. They know what they need to do to get their noses in front here this evening. It's taken bound by Leon Barr. Going BT. Goes all the way back to Matthew Boyle. again with Boyle. Five minutes gone. Scoreless between Crusaders and Glenn Torrent. That's a more than a robust challenge. He came in at pace. We're looking to escape a, a card here. Jaden Charnley. being prompted on the sideline. Show a card to Glenn's player. Chooses to stand his ground. Did well there, the referee, under a bit of pressure. Let the game breathe. And, uh, know who exactly is in charge. Tough games to officiate at, make no doubt. With uh, so much at stake, Oliver Peoples gets forward for Crusaders. Can he keep it in? Don't think he did. That'll be a goal kick. Goal kick to be taken by Milo Beamers. A number of these guys at the JD Academy set up. Front play. This time it's from Callum McCoy of Crusaders. Lost out though. There's a through ball and an opportunity. He rounds the goalkeeper and somehow George Feeney flashed that effort wide of the Crusaders goal. It should be 1 0 up. Should the Glens. And uh, Feeney knows that he could and should have scored his 15th goal of the season. Clear opening opportunity in this match. And uh, a big warning sign for Crusaders. An opportunity. Tries to make amends, does Feeney. Plenty of encouragement from his teammates. On the sideline for George Feeney, having missed those couple of efforts. A stoppage in the game. I think we're awaiting her match ball. Lost sight of 
the previous one. I have uh, got it back in possession. And the crews will look to clear out from the back. It's a good tacker, tackled by Oliver Peoples. Ball down the line is to Callum McCoy. Can he get the cross in? It's a timid one. And he does win a throw in. That throw will be taken by Cohen Beatty. Looked like a foul throw. Easily spotted by the referee. Change of attire for the assistant on the near touchline. It's Brendan O'Neill. All in blue now. And uh, down the other end. Here he is again, George Feeney. And it's the same outcome again. Another shot dragged wide this time. Just over 10 minutes into the match. And uh, George Feeney is certainly getting that uh, right foot of his warmed up. Hasn't managed to hit the target though. Let's see just how much pace he possesses. He's a danger man. He's the guy who at this minute in time Crusaders need to double up on. Free kick coming up. It's Benjamin McCartan. There's the player here in possession. Carton. Should be shepherded out by Jaden Charnley of Glen Torrin. choose to play out yet again from the back and uh, it's definitely a theme nowadays it's a great challenge by this course walker with that far touch line Scott McLeod will get a second touch and uh, the crews Earn themselves some precious yards. You can see quite a crowd in here at uh, Crumlin Leisure Centre for this under 15 Subway sponsored NIBFA Cup semi final. Nil nil, it remains between Crusaders and Glen Torren. Too much pace on that ball down the line from Peebles looking for McCoy. Let's get it down. It's Leon Barr orchestrating in midfield. Good retention from the crews. A little bit of warning for George Feeney coming up. For a little bit of afters. Play to continue. And Glen Torrent almost uh, had the opportunity to break forward with possession. And George Finney following in a line of uh, famous Finney's to have played for. The Glens. Oh, 
father, of course, played for many years in the international scene, once at Leeds, Warren Feeney, watched him for many years playing for Northern Ireland. Off the old block. In the same position as his dad did. George, the fourth generation of Finley family to play the game. Mum was also born in Wales, so I'm sure Northern Ireland would be keen if he hits the required standard to make sure he plays in green as opposed to red. I think young George could do there. Quarter of an hour gone. Crusaders nil, Ventura nil. Best opportunities of the game, both fallen to young George Feeney. Best of those after just seven minutes when he rounded Matthew Boyle. Somehow skewed his shot wide. Attempting to become the fourth generation from the Feeney family. Step out in the green of Northern Ireland. And the Glens will give chase here. Rio Crawford, formerly of Linfield, actually won the NABFA Cup with the Blues. Not the first player to switch allegiance from the Blues to the Glens. Free kick for the Glens, given by Charnley. It's uh, quite easily cleared by Crawford. up by the crews and in particular Brandon Downey. There's been selected to face Belgium next month. And the club NI set up just needs to be careful here does Cal Weather up going in there and uh, tackle showing studs so it had to be clean. Yet to really open up the glance. Looks to be going all the way back to 
Matthew Boyle from Coen Beatty. Yeah, good charging down from Feeney. Tension, but uh, just a little bit too much pace on it. Well, this is good from the Glens and Gary Dixon in particular. Lost out in the end, though. It's real Crawford. Stepping in. Need footwork from Glenn Swarms, Charlie Campbell. to do for James Heaney of Glen Torin. Does the job, looks for an option. Gets it and Glen Torin certainly have grown into this game. Probably quicker and uh, better than their Crusaders counterparts. Here at, uh, Charlie Campbell has come on for the Glens and certainly good to see particularly at youth team level, the full use of the squads. Roll on, roll off makes for a much better game. Twenty two minutes. Uh, still away at the first real clear cut opportunity for Crusaders. This Crusaders team finished joint top of the Northern Ireland Super Cup back in the summer. They're separated only on goal difference with Charlton. Plenty of talent in these two lineups. And so far, both teams cancelling the other out. Pick it up in the centre of midfield. Good pass to Peoples. Looks for the run on the overlap. Leon Barr can't quite force the ball across the six yard box. Another of those selected from Club NI to face Belgium. Northern Ireland away early next month. Taken here is Cal Weatherup. Tries the switch of play on the far side. Hop 
opportunity for a shot. And that just whizzed wide of the Crusaders' goal. There's Joe Kerr. So absolutely nothing between these two. Nil nil. chance for Crusaders to potentially break but cut out by the vigilant Max McGrotty. Teasing Glenn Strikers in. They do well across the back, but uh, they need to be careful. Glenn Torrent strike force is certainly potent. Under pressure is James Heaney here. Let's be careful. Not to give it away. Ball had run out on this near touchline. Be a throw in to the Cruise to Cohen Beatty. Cruise player goes down inside the box and it was Leon Barr. And I think it really was the momentum that was taking him into the Glens box and free kick goes Glen Thorne's way. Tricky play from Brandon Downey. Could well be corner kick. I make it a corner kick anyway. Defending to do for Paul Wilson's players. Downey goes across, take the corner. Goodness me, there's a downward header there. Just six yards, and uh, I'm sure Glen Torn defenders knew exactly where that ball was destined. Got away with it. ball into the Glintoran box and well cleared under pressure. 
Vince Horn's defenders. Definite foul out that far side by Barry McCarvey. Gives the uh, Crusaders the opportunity to send their big men out from the back, including Benjamin McCartan. towards Leon Barr and Callum McCoy. Cruz though couldn't find a way to trouble Milo Beamers in the Glentoran goal. He's had very little to do tonight so far. And still it remains scoreless. Familiar theme. And uh, these teams Playing tentatively, and I don't want to concede if they can help it. Referee has a decision to make here. Click, uh, free kick to Glen Torrent. Opportunity, a shot on goal. Weatherup. Carl Weatherup. He's hit the target 18 times this season. Went mighty close there as well. Couldn't quite. Find a way for Tanessa on the back of the net. The challenge from Rio Crawford. Thirty two minutes now gone. Still that seventh minute chance that fell away of George Feeney. He rounded Matthew Boyle, remains the best opportunity in this uh, semi final of the under 15 NIBFA Cup at Crumlin. Conditions are much better than they were a couple of hours ago. Lovely turn that from Jack Faluna. Crawford, tenacious battler in midfield. Doing a sterling job for the Cruz. Nice tick by Matthew Boyle. Isn't the fit wrong so far. Neither goalkeeper really has. Crews are quite compact. One thing they're not doing is pushing too many of their players forward. Certainly not without the support of some midfield backup. And that's meaning that uh, the line is having to be run by Callum McCoy more often than not on his own. 
very little. And we have half chances in this opening half. A lovely build up this time from the Glens, but Cruz had the chance to clear. Matthew Beatty, Leon Barr, you can see, is uh, looks to be nursing a bit of an impact injury. Walking gingerly in your shot. Cruise number four. Challenge this time. James King. Crusaders nil. Glentora nil. Keeper Matthew Boyle is going to get the loose football. <laughs> King Quinn has come on for. The crews. Leo Crawford. Man again to make that intervention, and there is the half time whistle from the referee. And the players make their way off at the end of this first half, and it's scoreless between Crusaders and Glen Torrent in the under 15 NIBFA Cup semi final at Crumlin. The best chance coming after seven minutes. George Feeney, he also had a couple of other half chances opportunities. He skewed the shots wide. Will he get another? Let's find out. Do join us again in the second half. We'll be back in under 10 minutes.
Well, welcome back. If you've just joined us, half time in this under 15 NBFA Cup semi final, sponsored by Subway, Subway. And it's live from Crumlin Le Leisure Centre. It's uh, scoreless between Crusaders and Glen Torren. A couple of first half chances fell to George Feeney for Glen Torren. Sort of 10 minutes or so outside of that, the crews have failed to threaten. Glenn's playing from left to right. In their traditional green colours. And the crews in red and black. Horst Walker, under 15 Northern Ireland International. Just beaten to the ball there. Firstly by James King. Committed the foul. Tidy footballer. Good footwork. Campbell. Baluna again. Ball around the corner. And a link up play between McCarvey and Dixon. Chance for Real Faulkner. Just come on for Crusaders. Faulkner switches play to Johnny Greer. Referee's blown. Has he? Must be a whistle off the pitch that I picked up. Play continuing. Super Bowl, that is. To Downey, and will Downey. A couple of step overs. Curvy. Which way to turn there? Continues to be Glen Torrent bossing proceedings. Good, they've yet to score. Walker, throw in. Walker will get it back. Looks for options and gets him inside. Here's Barr. Lovely feet from Barr. They look to be upended just outside the box and the referee has in fact given the free kick. Came a little late.
Well, apologies for the momentary lack of pictures. We're getting some interference given the weather conditions. Didn't miss anything. The game remains scoreless between these two Belfast teams. Faulkner for the Cruz. Asking quite a bit of himself is Gary Dixon. Just scamper well down this near touchline. Should be cut out by McCurvey. Lions do get the verdict. Brian McCurvey. That's the ball given to him by Gary Dixon. Opportunity. It's a great save for the keeper, Matthew Boyle. Tell you, Glenn Torrent are very much looking the more likely of these two teams. Semi-final, I've mentioned earlier in the game, but it's to set up the game against either Dungannon Swifts or Linfield. Chance for a shot on goal. Good defending. Good closing down again by Feeney. Yeah, it's very tactical this game. There's not a lot of uh, throwing caution to the wind, let's put it that way. Here is Feeney. Nice footwork. Cruz win it back. Strong work initially by Johnny Greer. One of the substitutes who has come on for Crusaders. Academy, of course, headed by Declan Cadell there. Time first team player for the crews. Goalkeeper comes, goalkeeper gets. And for Milo Beamers, he has to stay alert, particularly. Hasn't been in the game too often this evening, which is a good thing in a way. Needs to be on his toes, though. Make sure the crews don't one of their forays forward. Don't manage to, to nip in. Goalkeeper 
slightly hesitant on that occasion. That's Matthew Boyle. Purposeful build up by the Glens and neat touch there from Gary Dixon, number seven, who has actually seven goals to his name this season. Ball though has uh, drifted out of play. Looks like it'll be a, a goal kick. fixture 11 minutes played in the second half and uh, it's not quite lived up to expectation in one respect and certainly fancy goals here tonight Opportunity to shoot. Now it's with Cal Weatherup. Here's Downey. It's a nice shoot to go one way and goes the other and tries the. Well, it was a difficult ball to, to execute that one. To attempt to thread the ball through the eye of a needle. Down the other end. Oh, it's uh, weather up. He's got a couple of options there. Gary Dixon remonstrates with him. In the end, struggled to pick either of the two guys out. And it took a bit of a touch off a Crusaders player. And that means it'll be a corner kick to the Glens. that corner it's a deep one and somehow Gary Dixon has headed that wide 13 minutes into the second half and it remains Crusaders nil Glen Torin nil Crusaders camped in their own half. Oh, that's a late challenge. That's bound to be a yellow card. If it isn't, I'd be immensely surprised. Well, he's getting a warning from the ref. Efficient refereeing. There is Kian Quinn. There's a big lad, the Crusaders defender. Bar shows too much of the ball. To the Glens. Opportunity to break forward. 
again. Cruz allowed to break clear. Comes off Barry McCurvey, I think. Still nil nil. Certainly a few niggles in the match now. Played for 15 minutes in the second half. Cohen Beatty. That's lovely from Jack Faluna. Cracking fit work. Ball around the corner is a good one. There's a man over here. If he can pick him out. And again, the ball has drifted wide of the target. Bit of a look up. I think it was Feeney again. Could well have picked out Gary Dixon. Went it alone. And again, Crusaders living on edge. Faulkner. I think the ball was towards number 10, Brandon Downey. Campbell initially. A legitimate challenge. Referee was right on top of that one. Well positioned. Weather up. Ball again to Gary Dixon again at that back post. And again the same result. It's put wide. No frustration so far for the Glens. A couple of misses in quick succession for Gary Dixon. Keepers. Much too narrow an angle that to find pathway to a Glen Torren player. Turn on halfway by Johnny Greer. Ends win a free kick this time for a foul on Charlie Campbell. There was a name went in the book there. Crusader's name. This again to 
difficult position for the free kick. And it's one that uh, Glentoran couldn't make the most of. It remains Crusaders nil. Glentoran nil. Downey. Challenge from Barry McCurvey. Good ball into Feeney. And again, he's been better marshalled as Feeney in the second half. Here's Walker. Should be the goalkeepers. Well, 21 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Haven't had a goal as yet, and any notes that have made, they've all been Glen Torrens. A few chances for George Feeney. Best of those coming after seven minutes. And then two second half opportunities. A header wide for Gary Dixon in 48 minutes. And Dixon then missing after a searching pass, ball to the back post from Cal Weatherup. Dixon couldn't quite hit the target. Plenty of questions getting sent away of uh, Paul Boyle, manager of Crusaders, from his players. Benjamin McCartan coming across and also Scott McCloyd. Beamers for Glen Torrent. Couldn't quite take it down. Jack Faluna. Unlike him. Could this be another game? Destined for extra time. That's how the earlier game. Under 13 NIBFA Cup semi final earlier here this evening ended up. Coach Stewart through his victors against Glen Avon, winning by four goals to two on penalties after the game had finished one apiece in normal time. Nice show of the ball from James King. Point pick his teammate out though.
opportunity for a shot, which was wayward to say the least from James King. Jaden Charnley, who has the ball on the far side. across to Reese Williamson he throws it back to Glenn Torrin good pressing from Crusaders Coast Walker goes the ball down the line Just got a little scrappy. With eight minutes of normal time remaining. Attempted shot on goal from Faulkner. Hit the head of Ben Curvey. Here is Walker. Goes around McCurvey. Can he get the cross in? Wins the corner kick off Charlie Campbell. kick. It's Brandon Downey for the cruise. Downey. Good header from Weatherup, but it's back with Coist Walker. Downey in possession again. time running out for both these teams to edge in front in this under 15 NIBFA Cup semi-final. Very on 
unfortunate from James King. Change for the Glens. Weather up goes off. Here comes the goalkeeper. Needs to be careful here. Wasn't getting anywhere near that either. What's the referee given here? Looks like we have a player down. Have to wait until treatment is given. Manager is just coming on to the pitch to give a little bit of instruction to the cruise players. Paul Boyle. Now after this stoppage, ball going to be given back to the Glen Touring keeper for getting his back underway. So still scoreless, have had uh, a couple of longish stoppages in the second half. And uh, hello, we've got just a minute of normal time remaining for this game. We'll uh, ultimately move into extra time, have a few minutes of added time at the end of this game. Boyce Walker will struggle to keep that one in and does.
crews really haven't troubled the Glentoran back line, certainly not the goalkeeper. And although they've uh, all worked tremendously well to ensure that the game has been so tight. Downey in possession. Where's he going? He's going back towards his own goalkeeper. That'll be throw in to Glen Torrent. We're inside of time at the end of the game. King comes off for the Glens. Fresh legs on. Still we remain in search of that first goal. It's Joseph Logan who's come on for Glen Torrent. Sliding challenge that one by Benjamin McCartan. It's good play from Logan. Just ran away from him though, just ran out of play. Downfield. Yet again, another plane overhead. Here's Coist Walker. That's with Joseph Logan. All the way across the back for the Glens. Jaden Charnley. Care battling on. Well, that's a chance, almost a half chance, anyway, for George Feeney. He's falling back on the ball. Still haven't cleared a danger here, Crusaders, but well, quite a few of the players had stopped and. Yeah, the referee had blown some confusion there on the pitch. Got another player down. With a bit of cramp, it seems. Well, we're 
all set for some extra time. Not for the first time this evening. Here's Faluna. Two Crusaders players come in with challenges. Callum McCoy, one of those. There is the full time whistle at the end of normal time in the semi final of the Subway Under 15 NIBFA Cup at Crumlin. And uh, no goals to bring you. So. More action to come your way. Stay tuned, we'll have uh, extra time here, which will be 10 minutes each way. There's the potential of a penalty shootout. If you're just joining us, it's not the start of the game. It's uh, <laughs> it destined to be the end of the game. However, we've played the entire match and haven't had a goal as of yet. So we're into extra time, of which there will be two periods of 10 minutes. We're already underway at Crumlin Leisure Centre. Complex here. Matthew Boyle has the ball for Crusaders. Feeney tries to get involved, been quiet in the second half as young George Feeney shows how uh, tightly marked he's been. Uh, Crusaders defenders, Rio Crawford, at the far flank, was looking for Callum McCoy. He was dispossessed by Jack Faluna.
Bruce. Would have been free kick, but I think the referee got that just about right. Yellow card. Another player in the referee's notebook. Deep cross from Charlie Campbell. That's with Feeney. Corner kick to the Glens. What can they make of this? James Heaney. What can he do with that left foot of his? Decent ball. Six yard box and it's cleared for what will be a throw in by Coist Walker. Here comes a throw for the Glens. Barry McCurvey is up from the back to take it. They get the chance to, to cross here potentially. The Crusaders off for the first time this evening. Clear the danger into the fifth minute of extra time. First half that is of extra time and a shot. One goal from Joel Kerr. Well taken by Matthew Boyle. Strong defending by the Glens by Reese Williamson. Walker, deep searching cross, and the Glens clear the danger. Finney trying to intercept. The Glens nearly did. Crusaders living dangerously at the back, but that left foot of Johnny Greers. In fact, there was Benjamin McCartan. Second look. Nil nil, it remains.
ball. He's looking for Lugan. Jamie Pierce has died out of this match. Both teams started like greyhounds out of the traps. A lot of uh, early pass and move. Patterns of uh, free-flowing play and uh, the pace of the game. Uh, easy on the eye. It's just been one of those games that uh, both teams have set up to play resolutely against the other. And that's pretty much resulted in the stalemate, which you can see visualized on your screen in the top left hand corner. Coist Walker. Good clear by the Glens and by Reese Bell. Here's Kerr. Looks for Feeney. That's a lot of George Feeney. It's a service that uh, I think Glens number nine has lacked in particular tonight. There been too many occasions when they've landed the ball, have rested it at his feet and uh, let him run at the crew's defenders. Alternatively, the ball over the top might have been the one given his pace. There's been frustration for Glen Torin. Benjamin McCartan, strong challenge on Feeney. 30 seconds of time to play in the first half of extra time. Walker. It's not his best pass. Tired looking pass forward from the crew's left back. Teams just need to get the ball down. Downey. Closing down from Joseph Logan. Walker. That's with Downey. Downey. It's up against McCurvey. eventually blows for a free kick. I think the Glens players had won too many nibbles at the foot of the Crusaders Club NI player. for a shot for the cruise or for a cross in the end it was uh, really neither no conviction on it and that could well be referee blowing for half time at the end of the first half in extra time Teams will turn around straight away and we'll have 10 more minutes of action. 
Please stay with us. Well, here we go. Ten minutes in which to get us a goal here at uh, Crumlin Leisure Centre in this under-15 NIBFA Cup semi-final. And if not, this will go to penalties. Here's... Uh, Joe Kerr. Well, Luna didn't get the opportunity to turn. Too strong was the defending. Try the flick on. Runs quite neatly for Crusaders. Walker's ball down the line though can't find Rio Faulkner. Here's Brandon Downey. Looks like he could be the player that unlocks the Glen Torren defence here. Opportunity for a shot. That's really well done by I think it was Faluna. You got the block in the end. And the shot that comes in. After all that action, it's wide of the target. One and a half minutes gone in the second period of extra time. Scoreless between Crusaders and Glen Torrin. Free kick for the Cruz. Cohen Beatty stood over this. He's got runners with him. Opportunity for the cross. That's brave goalkeeping in the end. Shane Quinn, it was flying in at the back post. After that, Johnny Greer with the cross. Johnny Campbell involved there. Here's Joe Kerr. Kerr up against Rio Crawford. Kerr. There's Campbell. Campbell to Faluna. Faluna in towards Feeney. Ball never really got down into Feeney's grass, but Faluna wins it back once more. It's a good play from 
the Glens captain. Crawford. He wins a free kick. Still nil nil in this under 15 in IBFA Cup semi final. And Crumlin. the patient parents watching on supporters from the sidelines and everyone wishing for a goal hoping it's not going to be a penalty shootout Walker. Glenn's went free kick. That's with Campbell. Campbell. Great ball into the box and super saved by the cruise keeper, Matthew Boyle. So late in this game, his team relied on it. I think that should be a goal kick as well. I think the ref got that exactly right. Nil nil, it remains between the crews and Glenn Torrent. Great save from that young man. 13 clean sheets. It's looking like it could be 14. See what he can produce if this does go to penalties. Nice covering from Jaden Charnley. <coughs> BT. BT. Almost opened up for an opportunity. For Peoples, in fact, it's Joe Kerr now. Kerr to Feeney. And Feeney to Faluna. A couple of unintended passes from Ben Torrens players. And that's with Faulkner. Runs all the way through to the Glen's keeper. Charlie Campbell's received a yellow card. Taking it on the chin by the looks of it. Walks away in disgust. Right decision by the ref again, and three minutes of time remain in this fixture. Deep ball. Brave goalkeeping again from Beamers. Free kick given to Glenn Torrent. A nice explanation and clarification with it from tonight's referee. You can't jump in front of the goalkeeper. 
not that way anyway. So probably three minutes in total remaining with the additions of uh, stoppages that we've had in this second half of extra time. sets of players invariably thinking about penalties who will hit them what order they'll take them in and uh, Paul Boyle Crusaders Paul Wilson or Glenn Torrent almost certainly starting to write that detail down who knows it might have been pre-decided Alternatively, I might just do it on a whim. There'll be plenty of takers for these two teams. Here's Joe Kerr's ball, the super ball as well to Joseph Logan. And that's with Faluna. Couldn't take it second time around, Logan. It's a good take from Callum McCoy. Long ball down the line again. It looks that angled pass and ball over the top towards George Feeney. Just danced a little too much off the JD Academy. Northern Ireland under 16. Pull up on the way for him. There's McCoy. Too much on it, and uh, that's great defending from Jaden Charnley. I'm sure Feeney will be wanting to step up from the spot. And we really are now on the stroke of full time. Extra time up. Seconds to go. Charlie Campbell. Trying to keep this in. Here's Weatherup. Back on again. There's a cruise player down here. Jack Faluna plays again the ball over the top looking for Feeney. There is the full-time whistle. <coughs> so it will be penalties that decides this under-15 NIBFA Cup semi-final match. At Crumlin Leisure Centre between Crusaders and Glen Torrent. The second penalty shootout we'll have witnessed tonight. And it's on the way. We'll be with you in just a couple of minutes.
Always makes me wonder, penalty shootout, do you put your hand up there? Well, there, there are the hands up just on time. Who wants to take them? Which order? And uh, having the nerve to step up says a lot at this year, age, tender age. Just about to find out. Who's going to come up and take the penalty? And who's going to come out on top? Two captains has been have been called for. And for goalkeepers, will they dream of days like this? An opportunity to be a match winner. we go here's the first penalty coming up and it's going to be taken to number 10 well that is a fine start for Crusaders and for Brandon Downey he puts the Cruz one up sent the goalkeeper the wrong way 1-0 on penalties to Crusaders here for Glen Torrent can they equalize and they do just that it's Barry McCurvey who yeah uh, finds the far corner and makes it one apiece Crusaders and Glen Torin. Next up, it's Kean Quinn. Didn't start the game up against Milo Beamers in the Glen Torin goal. Kean Quinn to make it 2 1. Almost got there, the Glen Torin goalkeeper. Joel Kerr now. Joel Kerr up against Matthew Boyle. What can Kerr do? Left footed. Oh, finds the corner expertly. It's a fine penalty. And they've all wound up in the back of the net so far. Two apiece. On penalties, back to Crusaders. It's uh, Johnny Greer up against Milo Beamers. Here he comes, Greer. Sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Well, show of the eyes. And that was a fine finish. Just a pity the guys couldn't do it in normal time, but... Now you get a sense of what they're capable of. Next man to step up for the Glens, it's Jaden Charnley. Charnley, and again, sends the keeper, Matthew Boyle, the wrong way. And he makes it three apiece in this game in the penalty shootout. Crusaders three, it's Glen Torren three. 
Helen McCoy has the ball in his hands. And he's about to face Milo Beamers again. There he is, the big number nine. What can he do? Oh, the very top corner. He leant back a little and I wondered whether it was going to fire over the top of the crossbar. He couldn't have actually landed it any were better. It's 4-3, two Crusaders against Glen Torin. And the pressure firmly on the shoulders of young George Feeney. Feeney hoping to uh, step up here and make it four apiece. It's Feeney against Boyle. Feeney. Oh, that was easy. Absolutely just roll that into the net. That's the classiest finish we've seen tonight and uh, we've seen some terrific penalties hit here. And that's four apiece. Rio Faulkner is up next. Can he hit the target as well? Faulkner, great penalty, makes it 5-4, so all the pressure on this last penalty for Glen Torin, before the penalties go to sudden death, and would you like to be coming up a long walk for Kyle Weatherup, and Weatherup, he scored 18 goals this season, needs to score this penalty, to send the shootout into sudden death. It's weather up against Matthew Boyle. Weather up. Oh, great penalty again. And that's five apiece. So now this goes to sudden death. No separating the two teams here. And shortly, we'll start to go through the full team. It's Cohen Beatty up against Milo Beamers. Beatty right back for Crusaders. Of course, we're in the players now who didn't necessarily put their hand up for one of the first five penalties. A Penenka, and that is absolute gut shown by the Crusaders player. 6-5, bit of flair. Great play. Goalkeeper didn't like it. I wouldn't either if I was trying to keep it out. 6-5 to Crusaders on penalties. And Jack Faluna, captain of Glen Torin, needs to score. Faluna pulls it wide. And that means the crews are through to the final to face either Duncan and Swifts or Lanefield. Crusaders come out on top in this NIBFA Cup under 15 semi final at Cromwell. It always finishes in tears, and unfortunately, for Jack Faluna, not one of his better strikes, dragged it wide over the target. It had to happen to somebody here this evening, but in any case, there were penalties. Expertly taken by Downey, Quinn, Greer, McCoy, Faulkner and Cohen Beatty. And Crusaders come out on top, winning here by six goals to five after extra time and on penalties. Crusaders through. Join us again next time on NIBFA TV. See you then.